Welcome to Truth Seekers. My name is Mike Fishkin, and it is Saturday night. Once again, gentlemen, Saturday night, November 24th, 2007. If you guys are watching tonight, November 24th, Saturday night, 2007, you can call us if you'd like. The phone numbers are up there. We've got two lines today, which is great. Um, with anything you want to talk about in relation to truth seeking, we really love to talk to people who are sincere truth seekers. But we'll take comments from uh, others who are curious about the programs we've had in the past, um, all relating to philosophical spiritual truth seeking. Can we know the reasons for why we're here? Uh, is there meaning to life? Can we know that? We believe there is. We've shared that many times. We've done many programs on evolution versus creation, as you guys know know well, gentlemen, and um, that seems to be of continued interest. I'm going to read something that you folks will find very interesting. Before I do that, though, we've got Brandon Church with us again. We were just talking about the hours Brandon has spent studying science. He's calculated well over 10,000 hours studying science. I've studied it a bit, but not that much. He knows a lot about science. And we welcome your comments, your questions in, in any area relating to truth-seeking and how it touches on philosophical, spiritual things. We have uh, a fellow that I love listening to. Um, he's not a Christian. He's not a fundamentalist, as he says in the film. He's got a PhD in um, philosophy, and he was a postdoctorate fellow in molecular biology. He's published books in mathematics. He's worked with at least one Nobel Prize winner. He's a brilliant, brilliant man, Dr. David Belinsky. And in a couple of minutes, we'll have his credentials up on the screen. You'll see what I mean. He's taught at so many universities. And he just rejects evolution as a viable theory. And he talks about why that is. Fascinating stuff. The first section that we'll show is about eight minutes long, and then you guys can call up if you'd like and make any comments relating to what he said, what you think on evolution creation, whatever. Before we get to the film, though, I just want to read this to you guys. I, I came across this this week. Someone sent me an email relating to this. There's a Council of Europe that was established in 1949, years before the European Union, but they, they worked very closely with the European Union. And, and they state, they look at creationism and intelligent design as a danger to the state, a danger to democracy. Listen to some of these points that they have stated as parliamentarian law for themselves. They state, one, in point number two in their parliamentary assembly, the council asserts that, quote, if we are not careful, creationism could become a threat to human rights. Well, how in the world can creationism be a threat to human rights? I mean, the U.S. has been known to develop, you know, we've had more human rights in our society probably than any other society ever, and we were founded on a basis of the Bible where the very first verse, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So how can creationism be a threat to human rights unless you just have some sort of bias against true Christianity in this book, the Bible, where it starts out, in the beginning God created. Very strange. And it, it kind of lends itself to, you know, the, the Bible talks, as you, as you well know, about the Antichrist coming someday and a, then him taking control of most of the world, if not all of the world, in, in government. And who can fight against him? And it becomes a one world government. The UN has been pushing for that for many years. Um, they've, we've shown film on that recently and how Hindu groups from India are involved in the UN movement and to become one world with one, and for Hindus it's great, we can all become one consciousness, we'll, we'll all eventually reincarnate, you don't have to follow any one guru like Jesus, you don't have any stipulations, you can do whatever you want to do. There are no laws with Hinduism basically. Do what thou wilt is basically <coughs> The law, Alistair Crowley's old Satanist viewpoint, is basically what you can do. And so it kind of fits with the European Union and the UN and everything like that. A couple of other things before we get to this first section of this eight minute section of film, I just wanted to read about this Council of Europe working hand in glove with the European Union. Probably their boss in a way. I mean, if they were founded in 1949, 
way before the European Union. Obviously, something's been going on for a while. I think tied into the Bilderberger Group, the Club of Rome that Bill Clinton belonged to, this One World Movement. I remember Henry Kissinger writing a full-page article in the New York Times when he was retiring, stating that the best thing for the world would be a one world government under the UN. No more wars. That, that's a nice thing if you can trust human beings, but knowing the sin that, really what you get to is like communism, the, the, the core committee. Now if human beings were all perfect and honest and didn't have sin, you could trust a, a cadre of uh, oligarchy, oligarchical rulers, authoritarian rule. But what we've seen and what our, the found, founders and the framers of our Constitution saw, you can't trust people because they're going to want more power, they're going to, the ego's going to be inflated, power corrupts, more power corrupts, absolutely. But anyhow, a couple more points from this European Union's daddy, the Council of Europe. They say down here, um, evolution is declared crucial to the future of our societies and our democracies. It must occupy a central position. Man, this sounds like the Soviet Union. This sounds like dictatorship. Um, why is evolution crucial? I mean, did, was science, we talked about that before, was science really <coughs> impaired, you know, by Isaac Newton, Michael Faraday, those guys? Yeah, you go back three, four hundred years, some of the greatest scientists in history, Isaac Newton, uh, Copernicus, Galileo, uh, Kepler, and these people were not only great scientists, they were great theologians. Isaac Newton wrote numerous sermons. He was an incredible theologian. Um, uh, Kepler, who, who developed uh, laws of planetary motion and such, he was, uh, he's quoted as saying, he, when he was doing his science, he felt like he was thinking God's thoughts after him. There's an incredible book written, I believe it was by Henry Morris. It was called Men of Science, Men of God. It was a brief biography of 101 scientists, famous, famous scientists. Uh, and, and all of these people were Christians. Um, and it's just incredible to think that Christianity, you know, today's intellectuals think that Christianity can somehow impair science. If it weren't for these Bible-believing, God-fearing Christians, there would be no science today. In fact, Not uh, in the form that we know it. Francis Schaeffer, who you're probably familiar with, uh, great, great theologian, great mind, died a few years ago said that it was because of the logical, that if, if there's a logical God, then it was logical to assume you could figure out how God has put things together. And he said that's why Western civilization, Francis Schaeffer said, that's why Western civilization went ahead in the sciences when China and other civilizations that were more ancient, they developed gunpowder and some other things many years before Western civilization even started. But they said everything is random and chaotic. Mm. They didn't see a consistency, so they didn't look for a consistency. Yeah. Whereas I, Einstein and all these others say they see laws in the universe. Newton and, Design. and all these other people, they believe that God was reasonable, not that we can fully understand him, but that he is, he is understandable. He is not chaotic and, and the, you know, that kind of thing. And so it would make sense that his creation should also be reasonable and understandable. And so they looked for reasonable laws governing the creation. And they found them. And you know, when I was in school, in public school, right through college in New York, I never heard any of that, that, that most of this, almost all the founders of every branch of science believed in God, attributed the logic of science to God doing things logically. <coughs> they never talked about that. And, and you, you gotta, gotta wonder why. I mean, are people really getting a good education when they're not even exposed to those kinds of things? It, it's incredible. One, one or two more points on this, and then we can move ahead. <coughs> <coughs> That time of the year, struggling with getting over a little cold here, I think. Um, point 18 by this European Council. If we are not careful, this is a direct quote, if we are not careful, the values that are the very essence of the Council of Europe will be under direct threat from Christian fundamentalists. 